Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here, and welcome or welcome back to a YouTube video on the channel. And today, guys, we are going to be going over the winners and the losers of the 2022 AFL trade period, in my opinion. Now, of course, the trade period has just passed, and I'm going to be ranking how every team went in the trade period, whether they won, whether they had a win loss, or they were losers of the trade period. Now, before I start the video, I'd like to announce that the channel is so close to 500 subscribers. We're at 497 at the time I'm recording this video. So, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe, uh, as I'd love to get to 500 subscribers, and I would appreciate it a lot. All right. Here we go. So a bit of an oddly looking tier maker here with just three sections here. Winners, win, loss, and losers. But this is how I've decided to section it out. So of course, top being winners, bottom being losers, and the middle just being a half-half, win-loss, on-the-fence kind of trade period. So I'm going to say that Adelaide, they were probably winners of the trade period, to be completely honest. Like, when we're putting it down to just three tier lists, it's not like anyone significant really went out to make it a loss. Draft picks did go out, pick number five. But for ranking in return, I do feel like they still did win. Compared to some of the other teams going to be in win-loss, I feel like they are winners of the trade period. Now, Brisbane, they are another club that won now. The thing that's going to be separating the winners is how far back on the list they are. There's probably going to be a couple of clubs up in this winner section. And towards the back end is going to be clubs that had still wins, but not as big of wins as the clubs at the top. Now, Brisbane, they got in Dunkley. They got in Gunston. And um, they look to have enough points to bid on Fletcher and Ashcroft, their two father-son prospects, which will go both in the first round of the draft. So, massive tick of approval there for the Lions. Now, I'm going to say Carlton, they had a win-loss. They didn't really do a lot in the trade period. They did lose Setterfield, um, but they did bring in Blake Akers as one of the steals of the trade period. Now, compared to some of the other bigger names that have moved, Blake Akers isn't one of them. But I still do feel like they picked him up for nothing, a very steal of the trade period. So I'm going to put Carlton in a bit of a win-loss scenario. They probably could have done a little bit more, but I feel like still with what they did, they did a pretty good job. And, and signing some of their um, players on big extensions was really good. Now, Collingwood, I'm going to put them in a win-loss scenario as well. They had some players depart, which was like um, they, had, um, they, had, they had a couple of players depart. And, well, they did get lots of arrivals. However, they had McStay come in. They had Hill come in. They had Frampton come in. So they were in a bit of a win-loss scenario. The only reason why I say it was a bit of a loss for them was because they missed out on Braden Fiorini. Um, but other than that, they did do a pretty good job securing most of their trade targets that they wanted to get. Uh, which, you know, I'm just going to bump them up bump them up to winners. Now, Essendon, for, their, for what they're in, it was a bit of a win-loss. Now, look... They've been going through a really tough patch, looking for a brand new CEO still, I believe. Um, Brad Scott's very new to the club, missed out on their pursuit of Jordan Dugowie, but they did get a couple of decent acquisitions, which were Peter Wright, uh, sorry, not Peter Wright, Sam Wiedemann and Will Setterfield. So some pretty decent stuff there for the Bombers. So that's why I'm just going to put him in win-loss because of where they're at right now. These are some pretty decent handy uh, ins. Now, Fremantle. I'm going to put them in win-loss as well. Now, again, they did have a bit of an, ex an exodus brewing. Lob goes out, Lowe goes out, Tucker goes out. But then some of the ins come in like um, Corbett. You've got Jackson that comes in. They did miss out on Sharp in the end. But they did, again, get some ins as well. So they did get some decent ins as well. So that's why it's a win-loss. Bit of an exodus, but also some pretty decent ins in return. Now, Geelong, I reckon they were, for me... Winners of the trade period. If I was to rank teams 1 to 18, I'd have Geelong at number 1. Just, like, they won the premiership. How can they go and recruit former first-round draft pick Oliver Henry from Collingwood? How can they go and get former first-round draft pick Tanner Bruin from Geelong? And how can they go and get former first-round pick Jack Bowes from the Suns and pick 7 in a salary dump? H how can this happen? This is insane. This has to be like, after winning the premiership, this has to be one of the best trade periods ever in history. This is insane stuff by Geelong. I don't know how they managed to pull it off, but they did. They they did it. And it was unbelievable stuff in the end, I reckon. I, I just cannot believe it there that, that Geelong managed to do that. That is just insane. After winning the premiership, that shouldn't happen. And, and the Cats just as... 
good as they are, managed to get the job done in the trade period as well. So now the Gold Coast, which I'm going to put them in losers. Now, this is going to come across a little bit harsh, I reckon. But look, losing Rankin, disappointing. Tom Berry coming in, he's not the same as Rankin. And, and yes, everyone knows he's not the same as Rankin. Is he going to do anything near as what Rankin has done? Not that I would believe. I don't I don't even know if he, he's going to make the senior team, to be completely honest, at Gold Coast. Now, Ben Long comes into an injury-plagued half-back line. Nice acquisition there. But, again, Jack Bowes and pick number seven going out would really sting the club. They could have had two first-round picks if they had have continued on Jack Bowes' contract. But they decided not to, so... Interesting choice there by the Gold Coast Suns. Yes, I know it's a salary dump, but yeah, I'm just going to have to put them in losers. So now the Giants, which for this scenario that they were in, I'm going to put them in win-loss and above the Blues as well. Now, what they they managed to get some really good stuff in return for what they had to give up. They, they ended up losing Hopper and Taranto, both the Richmond on lucrative seven-year big, uh, big money high deals at Richmond. And um, the draft picks they got back were 12, 19, 31 and a future first. And they had to give up 53-63 Hopper and Taranto. Um, interesting. Now, the Hopper deal was quite... Um, took a long time, but in, in the end, a pretty much discounted agreeing price was met. And then again, Tim Taranto picked 12 and 19, got the job done on the first day of the trade, period. So, again, for the Giants, the scenario they were in, they were always going to have to go um, and leave them for, for good draft picks. And then moving up the board to number one to secure their prospect, uh, the, the the player they highly rate, Aaron Cadman, really big stuff for them. Hawthorne, I'm going to straight down put them in losers as well. Now, look, Hawthorne, it was a very disappointing trade period. If you're a Hawthorne fan, you go give up Jack Gunston, you go give up Tom Mitchell, you go give up Jay Gromira. Pretty much the only return you'll get is Cooper Stevens, picks 41 and 50, and Lloyd Meek. I, I'm not really sure about that. I don't really get the whole, let's just give them all up. Same thing happened last year. Nobody took them on last year. And then it happened this year again. Just the, the all those same players that were up for trade last year left, except for Bruce, who did end up staying. So I don't know how they're going to score their goals next year because, yeah, the Hawks are in a bit of trouble, I reckon. So now Melbourne, I'm going to put them in, I'm going to put them in win-loss now. They probably would have been in losers towards the start of the trade period, but they did manage to make a few last deadline deals that did end up bumping up their um, tier from losers to win-loss. Now, look, obviously giving up Jackson was the big loss. Getting in Grundy, massive win. Massive win. In fact, I'm going to bump them up against the Giants and the Dockers. Then they give up Weedman. They get in Shaki and Hunter from the Western Bulldogs. So, look... D's, not bad. Yes, they gave up Toby Bedford as well, but not like he was really going to play in this senior side, so I think it's okay. So now for North Melbourne, I'm going to put him in, look, losers still. I have to put him in losers still. Now, sliding from pick one to get pick two and three, bit of a disappointment there for North Melbourne. Yes, they still got two very quality draft picks, but they do need a key forward, and Cadman's going to be off the board by that time. Um... Whether they bid on Ashcroft or not is going to be another question, but they still wouldn't have enough draft points. Brisbane will get Ashcroft over the line. Now, for North Melbourne, they also gave up last year's pick number one, Jason Orn Francis, as well. And they bought in Logan Tucker, which is going to be some great inclusions, but just for what they gave up to what they got, nah, I just don't see that being great. Port Adelaide, I'm going to chuck them on the back of winners as well. Now, look, they managed to secure Jason Horn Francis and Willie Rioli. Meanwhile, keeping some of the likes of um, Mitch Georgiades and um, Dan Houston that were rumoured, uh, Butters, Bonner. They held on to all of them. Amon did go to the Hawks, but again, though, it's not a massive loss because they've got Horn Francis in now. So, again, Port Adelaide are winners, I reckon, because just because of what they managed to achieve, something quite good for them. Now, Richmond, I'm going to bump them up the high end of winners as well. You can see that they've split the winners in half pretty much. You've, you've got your three winners. You've got, your, you've got your three other winners. The three top winners, though, are the Geelong Cats, Richmond, and uh, Brisbane. Richmond, of course, lured in Taranto Hopper. They kept Soldo. They kept Graham. They kept Collier Dawkins, uh, players that were rumoured to go out and trade. Massive win for them. They've kept all their players. They kept Dusty after he was being rumoured to leave. So, all round perfect. Yes, they did lose their first round draft picks, but 
look for what they got all round perfect. Now, St Kilda, they were again losers of the trade period. In fact, I think couldn't really be a more disappointing side than St Kilda. Zane Cordy, the only in. Now, yes, they did everything, everything to get Jordan Dugowie. Of course, Jordan Dugowie stayed at the Pies, which makes them a win team. So, disappointing there for the Saints. Their list isn't great, and they didn't do anything about it this trade period. Now, for Sydney, look, they did focus on re-signing. Now, compared to where they're at, they've got a decent list. So, I'm going to put them on the end of win-loss. Now, look, they could have done a better job, but they didn't need to get anyone. They didn't need to bring anyone in. They bought in Francis in the end. Nice pickup. But other than that, they've got a great list. They're an exciting list. They prioritise re-signing. Tom Papley, he's wiped off the board now. Not up for trade. A few other players signed extensions as well. Good job by Sydney. West Coast, loses as well. Disappointing trade period by the Eagles. They did sign Jaden Hunt. But other than that, not the greatest of trade periods. They are struggling. They split pick two for eight and 12, gave up Junior Rioli. Not the greatest of trade periods for the West Coast Eagles. A bit of a disappointing one there when they need to try and get better. The only plus side to splitting their pick two is that they'll have some local talent down at eight and 12. But other than that, they're just going to, they've said they're going to take the best player in the pool at the time. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they choose when, they, when it's down at eight and 12 at draft night. Or whether they bundle back up those deals, because uh, you can still trade draft picks, where they bundle them back up and move back up higher into the draft board again. Interesting interesting choices to be made for the Eagles. Doggies now. And look, I'm going to say losing Dunkley was a bit of a disappointment. They also lost Hunter. They lost Shaki. I'm going to say it was a bit of a losers, but a bit of a win loss. I don't really know where to put them. So I'm just going to put them in losers. Just because of what they lost, I think it was a bit of a disappointment there for the Western Bulldogs. They lost um, Saki, they lost Hunter, they lost Dunkley, and they bought in Lobb. So, a bit of a disappointing trade period there for the Western Bulldogs. Just because you compare the outs to the ins, it's just a little bit of a disappointing one there. They've lost some of the real big midfield players. They did bring in Lobb, but again, though, ins compared to outs, you can see the difference. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you guys never miss another video on the channel. Thank you guys all so much. Bye everyone. Flaming footy out.